Hey everyone, in this episode I thought I would take you all along with me just to show a daily commute in my Nissan LEAF. A uh, little bit of a range test, obviously we won't use all the car's range, uh, but just to give a realistic example of what it's like driving the Nissan LEAF to work. And uh, today I thought would be a good day because we're running a little heavy with equipment in the back. I've got my uh, base amp back here for practice later this evening after work. It's not quite as heavy as it looks, maybe 20, 22 pounds. In the back here, um, I've got uh, a couple large boxes that I'll be taking or shipping to the Amazon FBA warehouse. We do sell uh, EV accessories on Amazon, so you can check that out. Uh, the link below in the description. You probably can't see in here, it's pretty dark, um, but I do have my bass guitar over there and bass pedals. So uh, all together, maybe running 60 pounds extra than I normally do. Uh, car is charged to full, which I normally don't do. I usually halt it at about 80%, but thought for today I would do the full 100% charge just to make the comparison easier. So let's get driving. Okay, so car is started up. We are at 100% charged. Just gonna back up out of the garage here. And while I wait for the garage door to close, um, let's just read what we got on the dash here. So right now at the beginning of our trip, it's telling us uh, that we have 100% charge, 92 miles estimated range. And um, I've got 10,914 miles on the car starting out. So, I just want to show you real quick on the main dash here. It shows that I'm going an average of 18.8 .8 miles an hour in this car. This is a three-year-old Leaf, by the way. Um, I've only owned it since November of 2017. Um, but it is a three-year-old car. And uh, yeah, very low miles for only three years, which is why I bought it. One of the reasons. Let's keep scrolling through. And what I'm looking for here is the energy economy. This car had a horrible energy economy of like 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour when I bought it. I've raised that up to, it was at 4.9, it's gone back down to 4.8, maybe because we're getting into the summertime here in Texas and I've been using the AC a little bit more. Anyway, 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour on this car. Uh, very good ener energy economy in uh, my opinion. Not sure how accurate it is, but that's what the car is telling me. So, let's go back to our battery indication um so yeah we'll just i'm just gonna drive to work we'll keep an eye on these numbers and uh i think it's like you know 12 miles each way uh to work so maybe 24 25 miles total i don't actually know for sure so we'll just see So I always make sure to put it into B mode, which I just did. Um, just want to make sure I'm getting the max regen braking on the car. If you hear that sound, my steering wheel is actually hitting the GoPro. So that's kind of annoying. I also, I don't know if you can see it, but I've taped it down with gaff tape uh, just because my mount was not sticking. Anyway, at 100% charge though, the B mode isn't going to really add much regen. If you look at the top left of my indicator screen here, you'll see these bubbles. There's like three of them. Uh, you know, they're showing how much energy you're using. And when it, now it's showing, you know, two bubbles for regen, but it's not giving you all the bubbles because at 100% charge, it's not going to regenerate as much energy because you don't want to send energy back into a fully charged battery. But as we get down to like, 94% I think we get all those regen bubbles so we'll be slowing down a lot quicker uh, it's just how it starts out again I don't normally charge to 100% um, you know I usually believe in the house at around 80 so I've got this nice big hill that always starts my commute 
It usually takes off 2% or so. Uh, we're already down to 99%. By the way, no air conditioning is running. I have the fan on uh, just to get some air going. Uh, I am from Texas. It says on the screen that you know it's 82 right now in the morning and we're just in the middle of May. Believe me, it's going to be a lot, a lot hotter when I get back to the car at the end of the workday. Um, but I usually don't use the AC on the way to work. So I think I'll stick with that for this video. Um, as we get closer to summer, I'll definitely be turning that thing on. So now we're about to crest the top of this hill. And yeah, we didn't do too bad, 98%. About to get into traffic. Um, and ever since owning an electric car, I've really been able to tolerate traffic a lot more. Um, I wouldn't call it fun, but um, having an electric car, you know, you're not burning gas, you're not wasting energy when you're not going anywhere. So uh, you're not losing any money that way. Um, so that I'm not in such a hurry, I guess. I feel like I, I'm a lot more peaceful. The car is quiet. I'm not losing any energy. I mean, barely any it's keeping the car on but not like a gas car where you know you're just running your engine and polluting the whole time that you're just sitting in bumper to bumper traffic so i don't know traffic's been a lot more bearable since owning an electric car Okay, so I just came down that hill, just a little, you know, decline. And again, I'm used to, you know, having the regen, you know, at max. But again, because we're so close to 100%, I kind of forgot that it's not gonna be that powerful. And yeah, I definitely coasted down that hill, which is normal. If you drive a gas car, you're used to slamming on your brakes. Well, maybe not slamming on them, but pressing on the brakes, you know, quite often. One of the joys, in my opinion, of driving an electric car is the regenerative braking. And I've talked about this in another video, but I'll just recap it here. Um, it's actually a way to uh, regenerate energy back into your battery by using you know, the kinetic energy produced by you just coming to a stop. Um, but you don't have to press the brakes all the time depending which car you're in. Now the Leaf actually, the region isn't even that strong, uh, but it's definitely a big difference from driving a normal, you know, internal combustion engine car. Um, you know, a BMW i3 or a Tesla and definitely like a Chevy Bolt EV uh, have very strong regen. I drove, I test drove the Bolt um, last year when I was looking at a new car, ended up going with the Nissan Leaf again. I actually owned a Nissan Leaf if you've been watching the channel. That was my first electric car. The exact same car actually. Um, I might tell that story a little bit later. But anyway, this is a different Leaf, uh, but it's the exact same year model and everything as my first one. But when I test drove that Bolt uh, and did this same commute, it was a totally different driving experience uh, as far as braking goes because the regen on the Bolt is so strong. Uh, it took me a little while to get used to it, even coming from, you know, an electric car that already has regenerative braking. Uh, it would come to a complete stop without you having to touch the brake pedal at all. So I just think that's a, that's a cool feature of electric cars. You get used to it, um, but man, when you hop back into a gas-powered car, you forget that you take your foot off the accelerator and man, you are just going to you're gonna coast and you're gonna to have to use your brake to slow down instead of letting the regenerative brakes in the car do it for you. Um, so that's just a little bit about regen. We're at 95% right now. And uh, if you look at the indicator again on the left side, those bubbles on top, the bubbles that are uh, to the left are the regen. So we just got a third bubble right now. So that's the regen coming back. As the battery capacity is going down, our regen abilities are going up uh, because now there's room, you know, in the battery to send energy back to it. 
Now here's another spot where I usually lose quite a bit of energy. Again, this whole video is about showing how the car handles, how the battery handles really um, at different speeds. So we were in pretty slow traffic right now. It always clears up right here and then it gets horrible again. But um, we're going fast. I'm going 70 miles an hour right now, which is the speed limit, by the way. I'm not speeding. Well, now I am, 71. But, um, and we're going uphill. So fast and uphill is not good for an electric car. Uh, that's like your least efficient, uh, you know, way to drive. I do it just to keep up with traffic. So I'm not a hypermiler. Um, and you know, this video isn't about me hypermiling and trying to get the best range. I just want to show exactly what I get uh, when I'm driving normally. And I would normally drive 70 miles an hour right here. Um, and our indication, our indicated range, according to the car, has gone down uh, about 10 miles since we started. I don't remember exactly, was it 92 miles when we started? It's saying 82 miles now. So that indicator, at least in the leaf, you know, is a, uh, you know, it's just what the car thinks. As you drive, you kind of get to know uh, the capabilities of the car. So I haven't gone 10 miles, even though it says that we, you know, have 10 miles less distance. Um, it's just something you get used to after a while. And as we come to a slow, that indicated range is going to go back up. You know, I bet we'll be at like 85 miles of range. You know, even as we're driving further, the indicated range is going to go up as we slow down here and get to be more efficient. So in my mind, I kind of think of the battery best uh, with the percentage. So we're at 92%. Uh, it's kind of like your your phone, you know, if your phone like indicated, oh, you're watching a lot of videos right now, so you have only this much time left. Um, oh, but now you're not and your phone's been off for a while. So now it goes up like that. It, it's helpful. It's, it's nice to have it there, but I'm a percentage guy. I mean, just tell me how much percentage is in the battery. You'll notice we were at 92. We've now gone up to 93. It's another cool thing about electric cars. You know, you never get more gas when you're driving your gas car, but you do get more energy when you're driving an electric car. So um, what's happening there was the regen. We were coming down the hill. I was using my brakes a little bit, but the regen braking and just my pedal braking combined together were sending energy back into the battery. Um, and yeah, it gave us a little more energy. Now I'm going to stop talking so I can focus on getting over. You know, I should probably not talk so much anyway, otherwise it's going to end up being like an hour and a half long video. So how about we just enjoy the rest of this commute in silence and uh, I'll get back to you when something relevant happens. Okay, so I am pulling up to work, about to park, and uh, we've only used 10% of 
of the battery since we started. We're at 90%. Down from 100% charge this beginning of the trip. 83 miles indicated left to go. And uh, I don't remember exactly what the miles were that we were at when we started. You know, I realize now I could have set the trip thing. That would have made it a lot easier, but I'll do the math and put it on the screen here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so we haven't gone very far. It's only half my commute. And, um, you know, the indicated range of 83 miles is pretty close to what this car is rated for. So, you know, the Leaf can definitely go uh, farther than it's 84 miles uh, that it's rated for. And again, this is a 2015 Leaf, so it's the 24 kilowatt hour battery, which is the smallest battery pack. In 2016, it went up, uh, and it's definitely a lot larger now. It's like twice the range. But, um, you know, this is what I got. The 2015 uh, with the 24 kilowatt hour battery does everything I need it to, basically. So let's see where we're at uh, after work. I'll be back in <laughs> after a long day, I'm sure, and uh, we'll do the second half of this commute back home. See you then. Okay, so I just got back into my car after a long day of work. Actually ended up staying a little later than I usually do, and it's hot in here, so let me just uh, start the car. The AC's still off, but um, let's just check the readings before I turn the AC on. So we drove about 10 miles to get here. We used 10% of the battery, so we're at 90% charge, and uh, the range indicator says we've got 83 miles of range. Okay, so um, temperature on my car says it's 98 degrees outside. So yeah, big difference from earlier today. I'm going to turn the AC on and then we'll watch uh, the range indicator drop and see by how much. So turn on the AC. So it went from 83 miles to 77 miles estimated range left. Whew. All right, well, let's get out of here and see how much range we're left with when we get home on the second leg of this commute. Difference, main difference being uh, that the AC is going to be running the whole time. So gonna switch into B mode again to get that max regenerative braking. And we're off. Okay, so I just got a text there. Band practice is canceled. So I'll just be going straight home, which I guess works out fine because now you just get to see what a normal daily commute looks like for me. Just didn't need to carry all this extra weight with the bass amp and the guitar, but um, hey, it'll give a more realistic uh, example, I guess. I don't think it's going to hurt us too bad on range, but we'll see.
Okay, so I'm just now noticing that we're at 80% battery, which means we've effectively used as much energy as we used getting to work, but I'm not home yet, obviously. So the big difference here, I'd say, is, you know, the AC being on. Um, I'm running it pretty cold in here. I'm kind of trying to temper it off so it's not ice cold, but uh, I would say that'd be the difference. So it took us 10% to get to work and we're already you know, reach that same 10% on the way back home. Uh, not much further left to go, but it's going to be a less efficient drive back home. Again, mainly, I think, because of the AC. So, we'll see how much lower it goes. So far, 20% battery used in total since leaving the house this morning. Okay, so about to be home here, and we have just crossed 20 miles total round trip, uh, which is surprising to me. I thought work was a little further away than that, but uh, looks like I only drive about 20 miles on average per day when I don't have uh, errands to run. Like I said, band practice got canceled, so that would have taken us a little bit out of the way. Um, if you're wondering about the Amazon boxes, that's not something I drove to do. Uh, there's a UPS store right next to where I work, so I walked those over uh, to get shipped out. Uh, once again, we do sell all sorts of EV accessories on Amazon, so you can check out our Amazon storefront in the description below. Um, but yeah, we can see that having the AC on, at least compared to our drive to work this morning, looks like we took like a 50% hit uh, with the AC on. So, you know, it's a, it just depends how comfortable you want to be. I mean, there's no way I'm driving in my car, you know, 96 degrees outside. So it's definitely worth it to me. I'll actually turn the AC off now. And um, actually, I'll turn it back on. Just so we can see here, you know, so we're at 75% battery, so we use 25% the whole day to get to work and back. Um, with the AC on, the range says 68 miles left on this charge. Turn the AC off, it jumps back up to 72. Um, something else I noticed getting in the car and driving back is that uh, my battery is running pretty warm. This morning I think we only had six bars on the temperature gauge over here on the left. I don't know if you can see it. Let me block this sunlight, but um, it's there. Um, seven bars, it looks like. It's running a little warmer than, um, than I like it to be. Five bars is nice, six is pushing it, but you know, we're into the hot weather and it's Texas. Um, but something else to kind of point out in this video is uh, the battery degradation. This is a three-year-old car and um, we're in Texas, it gets really hot. My son, my car sits in the sun out all day while I'm at work, but there really hasn't been any noticeable de battery degradation. I haven't lost any capacity bars. And if I scroll back through the efficiency uh, score here, I'm getting 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour, according to the car, which means I should be getting over 100 miles per charge in the normal city driving that I do. So a lot of people are concerned about uh, batteries. I've been reading a lot online about 
uh, replacement costs, what happens, you know, if your battery gets degraded too much and you need a replacement battery. I haven't seen anything to indicate that this battery is going to degrade at any alarming speed. I feel like if I kept this car for five years, uh, you know, maybe I might lose the capacity bar. I don't know. I haven't lost the capacity bar yet. That's going to be uh, a new experience. But I mean, this car drives like new as far as the range and the battery health goes, as far as I can tell. Um, so that's another thing to look at. I don't think you should be so worried about uh, your EV batteries degrading. And this is uh, not even, a th uh, it's not thermally managed, like the battery is just air cooled. Like Nissan has, you know, been criticized for not having liquid cooling um, on their batteries. So if in a worst case scenario, you know, an air cooled battery and living in hot, hot Texas, uh, going through those hot summers every year, and this battery is still performing the way it is, um, I don't really see any reason for concern, um, especially when you're looking at like a Bolt EV or BMW i3 or other cars that have, you know, liquid cooled batteries and just, you know, temperature managed batteries in general. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to show. This is my normal commute. We uh, use 25% of the battery, so I don't have to charge this car once a day. I'm charging it like every other day, sometimes every three days. Um, it just depends on how much driving I do each day. So hopefully this helps people out. If you drive an electric car already, you probably already know this stuff, but I really want this channel to be a resource for people that are new to electric vehicles. Um, and I remember one of the things I first thought when I got the car is like, okay, they say it can go 80 miles or however many miles your car is rated for. But what's that really like in the real world? You know, with the AC running and like, you know, going all sorts of different elevations. Uh, it's been, you know, it's been accurate. It's been even greater than that in my case. I'm a, I'm a very efficient driver, I think. But, you know, you can watch this and tell me how you think I've been performing with the regen and all of the stuff you can see on the dash. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful, at least. Um, I, I think uh, an electric car is a great commuter vehicle, if nothing else. This has just been wonderful for getting me to and from work. So, thanks for watching this. Again, stay tuned for more episodes coming in the very near future, I hope. See you then.